Sally had always been close to her cousin Brooke. They shared a history, laughing over childhood adventures, whispering secrets, and exploring young dreams. But as the years stretched, that warmth between them faded. Brooke was flourishing, career, social life, relationship. She had it all in perfect alignment, or so it seemed. Ellie, meanwhile, struggled with her career, was single, and rarely ventured out beyond her cozy apartment. While Ellie tried to remain unaffected by comparison, Brooke never missed an opportunity to highlight Ellie's lack. This wasn't the quiet sort of criticism that could be ignored. Brooke had a knack for weaving subtle digs into their conversations. It started with comments on her social life. Oh, Ellie, you're still single? Brooke would ask with an innocent tilt of her head. It's just that, at your age, I thought you'd have someone. She'd say it quietly as though concerned, but Ellie could feel the sting of judgment wrapped in concern. As weeks passed, the jabs became more personal. During a family dinner, Brooke brought up Ellie's latest job interview. Oh, so that job didn't work out either? I mean, Ellie, you've got to try a little harder. She laughed, but the laughter wasn't shared. It was directed at Ellie. The other family members, already accustomed to Brooke's habit of taking the spotlight, merely watched in uncomfortable silence. Ellie clenched her fork and mustered a forced smile. She wanted to fire back, to defend herself, but somehow, Brooke's words always stuck, wedging themselves like burrs under her skin. Despite everything, Ellie still tried to be understanding, chalking it up to Brooke's success going to her head. But one evening at a family party, Brooke turned her criticisms up a notch. Ellie had arrived wearing a dress she adored, an emerald green that accentuated her natural warmth. Brooke's gaze fell on Ellie's outfit as soon as she walked in. Oh, Brooke started with a smile that barely hit her smirk. Green is brave. But it's a little immature, don't you think? Brooke's comment echoed, catching the attention of nearby guests who looked from Ellie to Brooke and then awkwardly looked away. Ellie felt herself shrink a little her confidence wilting under the weight of Brooke's words. It wasn't just a comment on her dress, it was a judgment on her entire existence. Brooke didn't need to shout or be direct, her message was always clear. Then, as Ellie sat alone near the drinks table, scrolling on her phone to distract herself, Brooke approached again, this time with a new twist. Ellie, have you thought about therapy? Brooke said in an exaggerated whisper, leaning in close. It might help you, you know, with confidence issues. It seems like you're really struggling. The words hit harder than Ellie anticipated. Therapy? Ellie didn't even know she needed therapy, but Brooke made it sound as if she was some fragile, broken thing in need of repair. She felt the burn of embarrassment creep up her neck, but she forced a chuckle, shrugging it off. Thanks, Brooke, she managed, her voice barely steady. I'll think about it. Brooke wasn't done. A few weeks later, she invited Ellie to lunch, proposing a catch-up. Ellie, still hoping Brooke might want to make amends, accepted, though hesitant. When Ellie arrived, Brooke already had a sparkling water in hand, her perfectly manicured fingers wrapped around the glass. She gave Ellie a critical once-over before launching into her usual updates about her life. The perfect boyfriend, her latest promotion, her plans to buy a vacation home. And then, inevitably, Brooke turned the conversation back to Ellie. I just don't get it, Ellie. You're smart. You've got potential. What's holding you back? She asked, her voice a blend of bewilderment and pity. I mean, you can't just stay single and stagnant forever, right? Ellie's patience had stretched thin, but she held back, biting her tongue to avoid conflict. Maybe things are different for me, Ellie said simply, though she could feel her voice quiver with a mix of anger and hurt. Brooke's eyes widened feigning shock. Oh, Ellie, don't get defensive. I'm just trying to help. She laughed, and as she did, Ellie realized that Brooke was thriving on this, on feeling superior, on making Ellie feel small. That laugh, light and melodic, but with an edge of mockery, was the worst part. Brooke didn't see Ellie's pain. She saw her insecurity as entertainment. Their family reunion that summer was a final, unbearable episode. They had all gathered in their grandmother's house, the air heavy with the scent of home-cooked food and laughter echoing down the hallway. Ellie felt the usual ache of isolation, of feeling like an outsider in her own family. As they sat down for dinner, Brooke took a seat across from Ellie. The wine had loosened her filter, 
and she leaned forward, fixing Ellie with a scrutinizing stare. So, she began, her voice dripping with false sweetness, any updates, Ellie? Anything exciting? She winked, her smile razor sharp, and Ellie could feel all eyes shift toward her, awaiting her response. She tried to summon a neutral response, but something in her finally snapped. No, Brooke, Ellie said, her voice surprisingly steady. No updates. No big news to share. But maybe that's okay, you know? Not everyone has to follow your path. The room went silent, and for a moment, Brooke's smile faltered. Ellie watched her, savoring the tiny crack in Brooke's confidence. She had spent too long swallowing her own discomfort, dimming her own light under Brooke's glare. As she spoke, she felt an unfamiliar surge of relief, a sense of finally defending her worth. But Brooke wasn't about to let it go. Her face morphed, regaining composure with a glint of amusement. Well, she purred, leaning back in her chair, I guess some of us just find happiness sooner than others. I'm sure you'll get there eventually, Ellie. And with that, she lifted her wine glass in a mocking toast. Ellie's heart ached, but it wasn't the same sharp pain as before. It was the dull, fading ache of lost delusions. She could see Brooke for what she was, a woman who fed on the insecurities of others to mask her own doubts, her own fears. She was the one who was truly trapped, needing to see others as lesser to feel whole. Ellie didn't respond to Brooke's toast. She simply met her gaze, her silence speaking volumes. That night, as she left the gathering, Ellie walked out with a lighter heart. For the first time in years, she felt free from Brooke's judgment, no longer bound by the expectations and criticisms that had held her back. Brooke would never change, Ellie knew that now. But as she walked into the quiet of the night, she realized she didn't need her cousin's approval. She had her own path to carve, and she would walk it with her head held high. Ellie had never imagined herself as the kind of person to snoop or play detective, especially not where her cousin Brooke was concerned. For years, she tried to ignore Brooke's jabs, her ruthless confidence, and the way she belittled Ellie's choices. But there was a shift after that last family reunion, a change in Ellie's perspective. She no longer saw Brooke as untouchable or superior. And when Ellie began noticing Brooke's questionable behavior, it was almost as if fate was handing her the opportunity to finally see Brooke as she truly was. It started innocently, as most revelations do. Ellie was waiting for her coffee one day when she spotted Brooke across the cafe, tucked away in a corner booth. Her cousin looked uncharacteristically affectionate, resting her head on a man's shoulder, laughing, her hand intertwined with his. Ellie recognized the man instantly. Nick was Brooke's long-term boyfriend, the same man Brooke had gushed about endlessly, emphasizing how they were perfect together, and how Nick was the only man she could ever see herself with. Seeing them together, Ellie nearly turned away, not wanting to intrude on a private moment. But just two days later, Ellie's casual scroll through social media presented her with another shock. Brooke was in another photo, this time sitting with a different man. They were at a bar, leaning close, Brooke's hand resting possessively on his arm. This man was introduced as Derek, with Brooke's caption filled with hearts and phrases like, My one and only. Ellie's initial reaction was confusion. Had Nick changed his look? But after a quick search on Derek's profile, the reality sank in. Brooke was seeing two men, each completely unaware of the other. The discovery left Ellie reeling. Brooke, who criticized Ellie's every shortcoming, was living a double life. For a moment, Ellie wanted to dismiss it, to walk away from what she had seen and let Brooke's life unravel on its own. But the hypocrisy of it gnawed at her. How could Brooke preach commitment and perfection while juggling two relationships? Curiosity peaked, Ellie decided to dig deeper. She couldn't confront Brooke, not without understanding the full extent of her cousin's deception. So she began watching Brooke's social media profiles more closely, looking for any hints that might reveal how long this had been going on. It didn't take long to notice a pattern. Brooke had carefully curated both profiles to suit each man's personality. With Nick, her posts were wholesome and romantic. Sunset photos, home-cooked dinners, the occasional playful date night. But with Derek, things were different. Glamorous, high-end photos at upscale bars, edgy captions, and flirty hashtags. 
Ellie's investigation took an unexpected turn one evening when she saw Brooke at the same cafe where she had previously spotted her with Nick. This time, Brooke was with Derek, her demeanor equally loving and carefree. They were laughing, heads close, oblivious to the world around them. Ellie couldn't believe Brooke was so blatant, so willing to gamble everything for the thrill of two lives. She watched from her seat, her heart racing, feeling like a spectator in Brooke's reckless game. Days later, fate handed Ellie an opportunity she hadn't expected. A message popped up in her inbox from Nick, asking if she'd seen Brooke. Brooke said she was heading out with you tonight, he wrote, but she hasn't been answering her phone. Everything okay? Ellie's mind raced, knowing Brooke wasn't with her but most likely with Derek. She considered ignoring the message, but something in her snapped. Brooke had lied to Nick so easily, dragging Ellie into her web of deceit. Carefully, she crafted a response. Hey, Nick, actually, I haven't seen Brooke. Maybe try reaching out to her again? Nick thanked her and didn't press further, but Ellie knew the gears had started to turn in his mind. She could tell from his abrupt thanks that he'd picked up on something off-kilter. The next day, Ellie's phone buzzed with another message from Nick, this time asking if they could meet up to talk. His tone seemed anxious, and Ellie wondered if he had uncovered something. At the cafe, Nick was visibly stressed, his eyes darting around, barely able to meet Ellie's gaze. He explained that Brooke had been canceling plans, claiming work or family emergencies, but Ellie could see the suspicion in his eyes. Ellie, I don't want to sound paranoid, but do you think there's someone else? He asked, his voice cracking slightly. Ellie's heart raced. Here was her chance to let Nick in on the truth. But instead of saying it outright, she asked him questions nudging him to consider what he already suspected. Nick, I don't know for sure, she said gently, but have you noticed any patterns? Over the next week, Ellie watched as Nick became increasingly agitated, messaging Brooke only to receive short, clipped replies. It was evident he was close to figuring it out. Meanwhile, Ellie noticed that Derek was none the wiser, happily sharing his photos with Brooke as if he were her only love. Brooke continued her balancing act, oblivious to the crumbling walls around her. Finally, the breaking point arrived when Ellie decided to put the two men in the same place. She'd learned through Nick that Brooke was planning to meet him at a restaurant on Friday night, claiming it was a special date night. Ellie had overheard Brooke telling her friend that she was meeting Derek at a nearby bar on the same night. Ellie didn't plan to be there herself. She'd leave it to fate. All it took was a message to Derek's friend subtly hinting that Brooke might be out with someone special that evening. She mentioned the restaurant name where Brooke was meeting Nick. Derek's friend, clearly suspicious, immediately told Derek, setting off the chain reaction Ellie had hoped for. That evening, Ellie sat at home, her heart pounding, knowing the inevitable confrontation was happening without her. As she later found out, Derek had stormed into the restaurant just as Brooke and Nick were ordering. The shock on Brooke's face was indescribable, according to a bystander who'd captured the scene on their phone. Brooke stammered, caught off guard, as both men demanded answers. Her elaborate web of lies unraveled in the most public, humiliating way possible. Later that night, Ellie received a message from Brooke, an angry tirade accusing her of betrayal. Ellie read the words with a calm heart, knowing she had done nothing wrong but bring Brooke's truth to light. The tension between Ellie and Brooke had simmered for months but now Ellie was ready to bring it to a boil. Brooke had humiliated her, treated her like an afterthought, and criticized her every step, all while juggling two men in secret. Ellie couldn't let Brooke's double life go unchecked any longer. The perfect opportunity arose in the form of their parents' anniversary celebration, a grand event their family had been planning for months. Family, friends, and neighbors would be there, providing a stage for Brooke's hypocrisy to finally come to light. Ellie carefully crafted her plan, knowing it would need to be flawless to catch Brooke off guard. She reached out to both Nick and Derek, subtly inviting each one under the guise of a family celebration that Brooke would definitely want them at. Ellie made sure to approach each invitation in a way that wouldn't raise suspicion, positioning it as a warm family gathering where Brooke would be thrilled to see them. Nick, the dependable and devoted boyfriend, was an easy sell. I know Brooke's been meaning to introduce you to more of the family, Ellie told him over the phone, her voice friendly. Mom and dad would love to meet you. Plus, 
It'll mean so much to Brooke that you're there for her parents' special day. Derek was a slightly tougher case, given his edgy, unpredictable nature and his preference for the nightlife scene. But Ellie knew how to appeal to his ego. Brooke's family is having this fancy anniversary party, she said casually when they bumped into each other at a coffee shop. You know, a suit and tie kind of thing. If you show up, you'd be the one everyone's talking about. Derek smirked, his interest clearly piqued. The bait was set, and both men agreed to attend. The night of the party arrived, and the family home was transformed into a venue of lights, flowers, and music. The celebration was in full swing, with Ellie's parents mingling with guests, their laughter filling the air. Ellie spotted Brooke, looking as glamorous as ever, her dark hair swept up, her dress an elegant shade of wine red that complemented her carefully crafted public image. Brooke had no idea of the storm about to hit. Nick arrived first, dressed in a tailored suit, carrying a gift bag with a bottle of vintage wine for Ellie's parents. He greeted Ellie warmly, clearly excited and eager to impress. Ellie guided him to the main room, strategically placing him at the bar near the entryway where he would be hard to miss. Nick had barely had time to take a sip of his drink when Derek arrived, his presence making an instant impact. He was dressed in a sleek black ensemble, cutting a striking figure, and seemed to take pride in the way heads turned as he entered. Ellie watched with bated breath as Derek made his way to the bar, where Nick stood with his back turned. The moment Derek reached the bar, Nick looked up, his casual smile freezing as his eyes fell on Derek. Recognition dawned on both of their faces, a mix of confusion, then shock, as they realized they were each standing in front of the other. Ellie felt a mixture of nerves and satisfaction. The trap was closing. Both men, now alert, glanced around the room, clearly looking for Brooke. And Brooke, as if summoned by some unfortunate twist of fate, chose that exact moment to walk in, her eyes widening as she spotted both Nick and Derek in the same room, staring at her with accusatory gazes. Nick was the first to speak, his voice tight. Brooke, he said slowly, barely able to keep his composure. What is Derek doing here? Brooke's face went pale her carefully composed expression slipping. She opened her mouth to speak, but Derek interrupted her, stepping forward with a fierce glare. Yeah, Brooke, he added, his voice laced with sarcasm. Mind explaining why your other boyfriend is here? The room around them quieted, guests stopping their conversations to watch the scene unfolding in horror and fascination. Brooke, trapped, took a shaky breath and forced a laugh, attempting to brush it off. Guys she said, her voice straining to stay calm, you're both overreacting. This isn't what it looks like. Ellie could see the desperation in Brooke's eyes, her mind racing to find an excuse, a lie that would smooth everything over. But Nick wasn't buying it. He set his glass down with a sharp clink and turned to Derek. How long have you been seeing her? He demanded, his voice low, trying to keep his anger contained. Derek crossed his arms, glaring at Brooke. Almost a year, he replied, his words hitting like a hammer. And I thought I was the only one. Ellie watched Brooke's carefully constructed facade crumble. Her confidence, that smug superiority she had wielded against Ellie for so long, evaporated under the weight of her lies. Brooke tried one last, desperate attempt to regain control. She laughed nervously, looking around the room as if the whole thing was a joke. You're both being ridiculous, she said her tone brittle. I'm allowed to have friends, aren't I? But neither man was convinced, and her attempt at nonchalance only made them angrier. Nick shook his head, his face flushed with anger and betrayal. Friends, he spat. I've spent holidays with you, met your family, been there for you every single time you needed anything. You're calling that friendship? Derek, his arms still crossed, nodded grimly. Same here. Except I thought you actually had feelings for me, Brooke. Not that I was some, some accessory in whatever twisted game you were playing. The guests were silent, the tension palpable. Brooke's parents stood near the door, frozen in shock, clearly unsure of what to say or do. Brooke's face had drained of color, and she was now trembling, her voice a weak whisper. I didn't mean for this to happen, she said, looking down, unable to meet anyone's eyes. Ellie's gaze remained steady, a quiet sense of satisfaction building as Brooke was finally exposed for the manipulator she was. 
She hadn't planned for the scene to be this intense, but as she watched, she knew Brooke's actions had finally caught up with her. She wasn't even sure if either Nick or Derek would forgive her, and frankly, she didn't care. The silence broke as Derek let out a humorless laugh, shaking his head. You know what? I'm done. He looked at Nick, nodding slightly as if in an unspoken truce before turning to leave. Nick followed, his face hard, his disappointment evident as he walked out without another word. As the door closed behind them, Brooke was left standing alone in the middle of the room, her face a mask of stunned disbelief. She glanced around at the onlookers, each face reflecting a mix of pity, disapproval, and shock. Ellie's parents quickly shifted focus to resume the celebration, awkwardly trying to smooth over the disruption. Ellie quietly stepped back, watching as Brooke, stripped of her charm and superiority, became a mere shadow of the person she once presented to the world. Brooke's gaze met Ellie's across the room, and Ellie saw in her cousin's eyes a flash of realization. She knew Ellie had orchestrated the whole thing. But there was nothing Brooke could say, no accusation that could salvage her image now. As the evening went on, Ellie felt an unexpected sense of peace. Brooke might never forgive her, but Ellie no longer cared. In that moment, she knew she'd freed herself from Brooke's judgment and perhaps, in the process, had shown Brooke that life didn't revolve around her twisted games. The anniversary party, meant to be an evening of joy and memories, had turned into a ticking time bomb for Brooke. It took only minutes for the glamorous night to spiral into disaster. After Nick and Derek stormed off, Ellie watched Brooke standing alone, her composure shattered, her gaze darting around the room as she searched desperately for allies. But the crowd of guests, including family and lifelong friends, seemed to be transfixed by the chaos that had just erupted, whispering among themselves, exchanging shocked glances. Just as Ellie thought Brooke might slip away unnoticed, a murmur of voices at the entrance turned the attention of the room back to Brooke. Nick and Derek had re-entered, this time with a renewed sense of purpose, their anger simmering visibly. They were no longer willing to walk away quietly, they wanted answers. Brooke, we're not leaving until you tell us the truth, Nick said, his voice low but unyielding, his face a mask of betrayal and disgust. Derek, standing shoulder to shoulder with Nick, crossed his arms and shot her a pointed glare. Yeah, Brooke, we're not here to be your sideshow. You've been playing us both for months, and you think you can just shrug it off. Brooke, cornered, forced a trembling smile and tried to brush it off. This, this is just a misunderstanding, she stammered, a hollow laugh escaping her lips as she looked around the room, searching for someone, anyone, who might help her. But every familiar face in the crowd looked back at her in shock or disdain, a wall of silence reinforcing her isolation. Ellie's aunt, Sarah, Brooke's mother, approached cautiously, confusion etched across her face. Brooke, what's going on? Is there, is there some truth to what these boys are saying? Brooke looked at her mother, her face flushed, and shook her head wildly, but Nick cut her off. Brooke's been lying to everyone, he said, his voice rising, breaking through the silence. She told me I was the only one. She told me she wanted a future together, meeting her parents, all of it. But here we are, standing next to her other boyfriend. The room collectively gasped, some guests placing their hands over their mouths, others exchanging disbelieving glances. Brooke, who had always crafted herself as the golden child, the perfect daughter, the epitome of charm and grace, was now exposed. The controlled mask she had worn for so long cracked, her perfect image splintering in real time. You lied to me too, Derek added, his face twisted in anger. You told me you wanted something real, that you weren't the type to settle for just anyone. And here you are, juggling us like we're some kind of, of trophies you're collecting. The intensity of his words echoed in the room. Someone near the back snickered, and soon the sound of stifled laughter rippled through the crowd, breaking down the solemnity of the moment. Brooke's reputation, which she had cultivated so carefully, was crumbling in front of her family, her friends, and every influential person in her life. Ellie could hardly believe it herself. She had hoped the truth would be revealed, but she hadn't anticipated that the entire room would find Brooke's situation almost comical. The very people Brooke had looked down on for years, those whom she'd treated with condescension or outright disdain, were laughing. Her betrayal, her deceit, 
had made her the butt of a very public, very humiliating joke. Brooke's younger cousin Jamie, who had endured years of Brooke's relentless teasing, couldn't hold back her laughter. Wow, Brooke, I always thought you were above it all. Guess we're all just little people compared to your grand schemes, huh? She quipped, her voice dripping with sarcasm. The laughter grew louder, and Brooke's face turned beet red as she cast a desperate look toward her father, Richard, who usually defended her without hesitation. But even he seemed torn, a mix of disappointment and frustration evident on his face as he shook his head. Brooke finally raised her hands, pleading, Enough. Yes, I dated both of them. But it's, it's not as bad as it looks. You don't understand, I didn't mean for it to happen like this. Derek raised an eyebrow, his gaze hardened. Not as bad as it looks? Brooke, you told me you loved me. You asked me to meet your family, look where that got me. He gestured around the room to the gawking audience, emphasizing his point. Nick, however, seemed unwilling to hear any more. You're right, Brooke. I don't understand, he said, bitterness seeping into his voice. Because I don't know how anyone could lie like you did. Do you even know what love is? Or is it just another game to you? At that, the room fell silent again. Brooke's defenses crumbled. Her shoulders slumped, and she looked down, her voice barely above a whisper. I'm sorry, I just... I just didn't want to lose either of you. Ellie's father, who rarely intervened in family drama, stepped forward, his voice stern. Brooke, we thought you were better than this. You've hurt not just these two young men, but everyone who trusted you, who looked up to you. His words carried weight, the disappointment clear, cutting through whatever sympathy Brooke might have hoped to muster. The awkward silence that followed was broken by Aunt Sarah's voice, her own tone cold. I don't know who you think you are, Brooke, playing with people's hearts like this. And in front of all of us, your family, your friends. This, this is not who we raised you to be. Brooke's eyes brimmed with tears, the reality of her actions hitting her like a tidal wave. She had no retort, no quippy comeback, no way to deflect the anger and disappointment from the people she had taken for granted all her life. Her carefully constructed image lay shattered at her feet. In the crowd, Ellie felt a complex surge of emotions. She hadn't wanted to see Brooke's life destroyed, not entirely. Yet, in this moment, it was clear that Brooke's own lies had led her here. Ellie hadn't forced her into deceit, hadn't orchestrated Brooke's every lie. All Ellie had done was let the truth come to light. The whispers grew louder as Brooke, utterly humiliated, attempted to slip out of the room. She walked quickly, her head down, avoiding eye contact, and the laughter and murmurs of disgust followed her every step. It was clear she could no longer hold court in this crowd. She was now a pariah among the very people she had once manipulated so effortlessly. As Brooke reached the door, Jamie called out one last dig, unable to resist the opportunity. Hey Brooke, maybe next time, pick one guy at a time, it'll save you from the trouble of double booking. The room erupted in laughter, sealing Brooke's humiliation. She shot Jamie a wounded look but said nothing, pushing open the door and disappearing into the night. Ellie felt a pang of pity, but the sympathy was fleeting. Brooke had built her empire on lies, and it had collapsed just as easily. The guests, now fully distracted by the drama, resumed mingling, their conversations laced with animated recaps of what they had just witnessed. Ellie's parents, after a brief attempt to refocus everyone's attention on their anniversary, sighed and gave in, leaving the night to play out as it would. In the end, Brooke's scandal would likely overshadow the celebration, but Ellie's parents accepted it with surprising grace, perhaps realizing the importance of letting people see the truth, even when it was uncomfortable. As the party wound down, Ellie felt a sense of closure, knowing she was finally free of Brooke's endless criticism. In one night, the balance had shifted. Ellie was no longer the timid, unsure cousin living in Brooke's shadow. She had found her own voice, and Brooke's reign as the family's unchallenged center of attention was over. In the aftermath of the explosive anniversary party, Brooke became a ghost in the family. Word spread quickly through their community about her double life leaving her with little choice but to disappear. Brooke's parents attempted some damage control, trying to assure everyone it was just a misunderstanding, but even they seemed exhausted and embarrassed. Within a week, Brooke packed her bags and left for a vague work opportunity on the opposite coast.
a move that everyone knew was simply her way of escaping the humiliation. Ellie didn't see her leave, but she heard from Aunt Sarah that Brooke had barely spoken a word as she went. With Brooke gone, Ellie felt a strange lightness she'd never known before. For years, Brooke had overshadowed her, casting doubt on her choices, undermining her confidence, and drawing attention from everyone they knew. Brooke's departure, though abrupt, had carved out a space Ellie didn't expect. She hadn't anticipated how freeing it would feel to simply exist without Brooke's scrutiny. Ellie's newfound independence opened doors she had long kept closed. She started small, stepping out of her comfort zone in ways she never would have before. One evening, she took herself out for dinner at a new restaurant in town, a lively spot with live music and a warm ambience. The table she'd reserved was a cozy nook near the band, and as she settled in, the waitress brought over a complimentary glass of wine. Oh, I didn't order this, Ellie said, a bit confused. It's from that gentleman over there, the waitress replied, nodding toward a man at the bar. He was tall, with an easy smile and a friendly demeanor. Catching Ellie's glance, he raised his glass in a polite gesture. She hesitated, unused to this kind of attention, but with a burst of newfound confidence, she raised her glass in return. The man introduced himself as Max, a local photographer who'd recently moved back to town. They struck up a conversation that flowed so easily it surprised Ellie. Max had an infectious energy that drew her in, and as they talked, Ellie felt her confidence grow. For the first time, she was engaging with someone who saw her as her own person, not as Brooke's cousin or anyone's afterthought. Their conversation ranged from favorite travel spots to books they both loved, and when he suggested they meet again, Ellie felt her heart skip in excitement. As Ellie began seeing Max regularly, she noticed changes in herself, too. She stopped holding back her thoughts in conversations and began opening up to her friends about her life, dreams, and struggles. Her close friend, Kara, who had seen Ellie through all the years of Brooke's influence, immediately noticed the transformation. You're like a completely different personnel, Kara remarked one evening over coffee. It's like you've been hiding this part of yourself, and now it's finally coming out. Ellie laughed, feeling the warmth of her friend's words. I think I have been. I spent so long worrying about what Brooke would think, what she'd say, and I forgot who I am. But it's time to change that. Kara and Ellie's friendship grew deeper, now unburdened by Ellie's anxieties. They began planning weekend hikes, venturing to art exhibits, and attending community events. Kara introduced Ellie to new people, too. Her cousin Liam, a fellow artist with a quirky personality, and Shauna, a musician who quickly invited Ellie to an upcoming open mic night. Each of these connections brought new experiences and new ways for Ellie to step out of the shell she'd once believed was her entire identity. But it wasn't all easy. Occasionally, Ellie felt the familiar tug of insecurity creep back, moments where Brooke's criticisms would replay in her mind. One day, while working on a photography project Max had encouraged her to try, Ellie found herself doubting her own abilities. The photographs seemed amateurish to her, lacking the polish and precision she thought they needed. She considered scrapping the whole project, her hands hovering over the delete button. But then she paused, recalling how Brooke had once belittled her interest in photography, laughing it off as just another phase. Realizing that Brooke's voice was still influencing her thoughts, Ellie forced herself to step back. She reached out to Max, inviting him over to review the photos together. His reaction was immediate and honest. Ellie, these are amazing. You have such a natural eye. Look at the way you've captured the light here. It's incredible, he said, pointing to one of her shots. Seeing the images through someone else's perspective helped her appreciate her work in a new way. That night, she uploaded the photos to her social media, braving the vulnerability of sharing something she cared about deeply. The positive feedback was overwhelming, with comments from friends and even a few local photographers who praised her work. Ellie felt a surge of pride and validation she hadn't experienced before. She realized that her art, her choices, and her life didn't need anyone else's approval, not Brooke's, and not anyone's. Soon, Ellie found herself attending Shauna's open mic night, an event that previously would have filled her with dread. Shauna invited her on stage to read a piece Ellie had written about finding one's own path, inspired by her journey out from Brooke's shadow. 
The audience listened attentively, and as Ellie read, she felt a powerful sense of belonging. After her reading, Shauna hugged her and whispered, That was beautiful. You're amazing, Ellie. A few weeks later, Ellie's family gathered for another small celebration. She felt some anxiety about seeing everyone without Brooke there, unsure of how she would be received. But to her surprise, her aunts and uncles, who had once treated her as Brooke's shy cousin, were warm and attentive. Her aunt Sarah, who had been so shocked by Brooke's behavior, pulled Ellie aside at one point. Ellie, I want you to know something, Sarah said, her voice soft but sincere. We've been so focused on Brooke for so long, we forgot to really see you. And I'm sorry for that. You've grown into such a strong, impressive young woman. I'm proud of you. The words touched Ellie deeply, and she realized that even her family was seeing her in a new light, one not defined by her cousin's influence. They saw her as her own person, someone with her own voice, ambitions, and character. With time, Ellie's relationship with Max blossomed, her friendships strengthened, and her creative projects flourished. The past no longer felt like a weight she carried. It was simply a chapter that had led her to this moment, one she had finally moved beyond. Months later, Ellie received a letter from Brooke. It was short, apologetic, and filled with vague reflections on how mistakes had been made and how she was working on herself. Brooke didn't ask for forgiveness outright, but she hinted that she hoped one day they could reconnect. Ellie folded the letter and placed it in a drawer. She no longer felt the need for Brooke's apology. Her self-worth wasn't bound to Brooke's actions or opinions. Ellie was free, living a life full of laughter, love, and confidence she had once believed was beyond her reach. And in the quiet moments, she thanked herself for having had the courage to step out from Brooke's shadow and discover her own light.